do. It was a beautifully calm day out here on first light. Not a lot of swell, but it was nice and overcast and perfect for the tower, except for one thing. As you can see, there's weed bloody everywhere. It took me ages to track down this spot, so I thought I'd take a few casts and see how I could handle it. I then saw schools of fish smashing something out the back and I thought I'm going to work this out. As you see here there's big walls of weed and another thing you might be able to see in this video is that there are flies all over the seaweed. Is that the flies will drop maggots into the seaweed, little bait fish or herring will come and eat the, the maggots and then the bigger fish will feed on them. As you can see there are flies bloody everywhere. So I brought a couple of rods down but in this sort of uh, setup I knew that I would have to use the heavier rod so I've got my 9 foot 2 Veritas which is quite a stiff rod for a um, uh, uh, spinning rod for stick baits that I use. I've then got a 5000 Nasky and I'm pretty sure it's 20 pound braid and uh, 20 pound leader. So 20 pound braid is on the higher end of what I'd use to target Taylor off the beach. So with the heavier braid it allows me to lock up my drag a lot more so it's not locked all the way but it's pretty tight. I'm really going to have to drag these fish in which will probably pull a few more hooks than usual but you don't really have any other choice in conditions like this. And I'm going to use lures which are going to give me the least chance of snagging. So I'm going to pick a lure which doesn't have two trebles or two hook points, mainly just one or I'll take off the second treble if it does have one. So all the lures I'll be using today will have single inline uh, hooks on it with the hook pointed to the sky and then I'll run them over the surface. So here I was retrieving uh, a little Savage Gear Missile 21 gram. Um, I used this lure as well just because I wanted to see if there's a little herring out there at the same time as well. And also when you're fishing like this you've got a much higher chance of losing lures so it's, so it's a much cheaper option. There's really no room to let the fish run. I've just got to yank them in and keep my line above the line of seaweed. Have a look in the mouth of this one. He's got a mouthful of lettuce. A bit down on it when you let go. So here I found a little rock which I could stand on close to the beach to give me a little bit more height. One of the really important things when in fishing in conditions like this is not necessarily the worry about your lure snagging onto seaweed, which is a problem. The bigger issue is if that uh, some of that weed uh, floats across the top of your line, then you will lose lures. So. I'll show you what that looks like when I get lazy later in the video. As I'm holding my rod up a lot higher when I'm pulling in these fish, you've got more chance of them jumping around and making an aerial display. Which means that they're more likely to shake out hooks, but it's a lot more fun as well. So I'm holding up my rod a lot higher when I'm pulling in the fish because I'm pulling it over the top of the weed line here again to avoid any of the weed floating across the top of my line as I'm bringing it in. So I want the fish's head to be at the surface of the water as I'm bringing it in the whole time. If I'm trying to pull it through the back of the weed I'll just have seaweed pile over the top of my braid and it'll be all over. Another lovely tailor. After a little while I switched over to a CID uh, Sprat in 95. This was a little bit of a heavier lure and I like the colour of it 
for overcast conditions. It died off a little bit on the Savage gear and I could see fish busting up just a little bit further so I went for this lure which is probably a bit of a better presentation and also gave me an extra 5 meters in my casting distance. So with this lure I'm casting out as far as I can. I'm retrieving it either on the surface or just under. So here you can see that I'm retrieving the lure with my rod tip much higher than I would. Usually when I'm retrieving uh, lures like this, I almost have my rod horizontal to the water. Um, that allows me to impart more action on the lure. Here I'm doing it this way just because it's overcast, fish are hitting the surface or bite already and I don't really have any other choice because I don't want that seaweed to go over the top of my braid. So I've got a nice hook up and trying to find the best pathway where I can drag the fish through. Again, keeping its head above the line of the seaweed as best as I can. Drag nice and strong so it doesn't run and get caught up. And just hope that I don't throw the hooks. These conditions are definitely not ideal. So even though you can catch fish in here, you're going to lose a lot. So when you're fishing in conditions like this, it's trying not to get frustrated by losing fish because getting one or two fish or um, a few fish out of conditions like this is worth, you know, six fish on a perfect day. So here, I've got a nice hook up and I have no choice but to hold the rub tip high to pull it over the top of the weed. So you're going to have more chance with the fish having its head out of the water, allowing less osmotic pressure on its head and allowing it to shake your hook easier as well. All a part of it. Now like I was saying earlier in the video, this is what happens when you get lazy. So here I cast it out and then something else caught my eye and I didn't notice that my braid had lined across the top of the water and then a small little wave just took it under. So I'd been out here for a couple of hours and I just got lazy. So I've got stacks of weed that were pulled over the top of the braid. Thankfully, I nearly got it all the way in. So you can see how much weed was tangled up into the braid. The lure was in there somewhere, but that wasn't the main culprit. Luckily it snapped just on the shore and I could run and uh, retrieve my lure in the braid. But after that, it was time to pack up. Great session. For more Taylor Perth Metro videos, please subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section.